So last week, we looked at Opposition Instructions Cheat Sheet for Football Manager 2024, and I did a breakdown of how Opposition Instructions in Football Manager kind of works and the way I go about doing it. And one of the methods I shared in that video is Tactical Opposition Instructions. And in this video, we're going to go into detail of how I approach Opposition Instructions from a tactical perspective. Now, the other two methods are stat-based and player-based opposition instructions. The stats-based opposition instructions involves you going into the data hub and using the information you find here to actually apply opposition instructions. The other method is the player-based opposition instruction which involves you going into the next opposition. For example, I'm here with my Benfica save and I have a game against Bayern coming up. Going into the squad list, looking at their first 11, looking at who their top players are, who their best players, and then looking at the individual attributes of those players. Wow, just like him, she's stacked. But player base involves using those individual attributes, the knowledge you have of the opposition's individual attributes to actually apply opposition instructions. For more about that video, I'm going to attach a link in the description so you can watch that video. But in this one, we're going to look at tactical opposition instructions in detail. So first, you need to understand two things with how I go about applying tactical opposition instructions in the game. Now, this isn't limited to Football Manager 2024 alone. I've actually been doing this since FM 2017, I think, when I didn't really know much about OI, so I started learning about opposition instructions. But from FM 2021 and 22, I started getting good at this stuff. So we're here in the opposition instruction screen, just in case. But this is where we're going to start from to apply tactical opposition instructions. So what you want to do first is actually go into your tactics. And the first thing you need to understand is your team's tactical instructions out of possession. Now you're going to see that currently with SL Benfica right now, I have a mid block and a standard defensive line. In Football Manager, there are three ways you can actually have your line of engagement and it's really important with how you're going to apply opposition instructions. So with a mid block, the opposition instructions are going to differ and if you're using a high press, the opposition instructions are going to be slightly different and if you're using a low block and a low defensive line, the opposition instructions are also going to be slightly different. So we'll start with a high press with a high line of engagement like this. What this does, it actually allows you to trigger press the opposition's central defenders and fullbacks and to some extent their defensive midfielders. If you have a number 10 in this role or two strikers, you could actually go on to press the opposition's central defenders. Assistant manager recommendations and we can see that Joshua Kimmich and Harry Kane are players that we should go on to type mark and Thomas Muller as well, she probably tackle him really hard. I'm just going to clear this real quick and then looking at the way I've pushed it to the high press now, you can see that I can choose to have Kim Min Jai. You can see a player like Kim Min Jai has mental aggression. Uh, he has mental ability with good aggression, good bravery, good composure. You could, with the high press, ask your players to actually go on to press Kim Min Jai. Now, this isn't recommended because I'm playing against Bayern and Bayern is a team that has the ability to actually play out from the back. So with the high press, what, you, what will happen is that you do have the license to start pressing the opposition high up the pitch and start pressing their fullbacks or their central defenders. But with a mid block, that is not really the case. When you go on to ask your assistant manager to actually recommend his own opposition instructions, you can see that he doesn't recommend anybody in the back line. That's telling me that my assistant manager has an idea that the back four for Bayern would be able to play out from the back. So trigger pressing any of these players would actually cause us more harm than good. So remember that with a high press, you can actually go on to press the opposition's defensive line. With a mid block, which is what my assistant manager is recommending based on these instructions that he's showing me here. With a mid block, you're going to go on to trigger press somebody in the center. Somebody like Joshua Kimmich that is in here. According to my assistant manager, he has recommended Kimmich. You're going to likely press players in the DM or central midfield. Currently, they don't have any central midfielders, but you're going to go on to press players in the central midfield position. Similarly, with a low block, if you go on to shift it to a low block now, we it means that nobody in the opposition's back line or even their defensive midfielder is going to have a trigger press selected on them. Now, if you go to the opposition instruction screen and you actually ask your assistant to recommend an opposition instruction and then he starts triggering somebody in the opposition's back four, it means that your low block is probably not the line of engagement that you're supposed to be using based on the opposition that you're playing against. But with a low block, you can see that you can have a tight marking on Harry Kane. It encourages you to press players that are coming onto your defensive third. So players that are strikers or wingers, it allows you to actually press those inside forwards or 
wingers that are going out wide to try and cross the ball. It allows you to actually type mark those players a lot better. Type marking sort of works well with low line of engagement and low trigger press. So I've been rambling on for a while and the summary of the matter is that if you have a high press, you actually have your trigger press set to opposition's central defenders, fullbacks and even their defensive midfielders. If you have a mid block, it means that your trigger press is going to go on central midfielders or even wingers that are in the flat line of the central midfield, those sort of wingers. And sometimes the defensive midfielder as well but if you have a low block it means that you're actually targeting and marking players that are coming into your defensive third players like strikers attacking midfielders in the number 10 wingers or inside forwards those are the players that are going to actually have a lot of attention the low block helps you stay your shape better so your trigger press is going to be much less you're going to wait a whole lot for your right moment before you actually go on to trigger press and of course the high press is going to relentlessly try to win the ball early in the opposition's defensive third and help you catch them unawares. Now the second thing I normally look at in tactical instructions for opposition instruction is to look at the team's defensive width. Now defensive width has changed in Football Manager 2024. In previous games it used to be show them outside or it used to be defensive width but now the pressing trap is showing the opposition inside or showing the opposition outside. You can do this manually in opposition instruction screen without even triggering these options in here that's the second aspect of tactical opposition instructions that i look at and then if you look at the opposition instructions now looking at the players that are starting for Bayern Munich or the proposed starting 11 Leroy Sane is in that team and he's a very good left-footed player i don't know how well or how good he is on his right i'm going to assume he's not very good on his right but he's a very good left-footed player so i'm not going to allow Leroy Sane to stay on his left foot a whole lot he has Thomas Muller in the middle and he's, there's a tackling harder instruction recommended from my assistant for Thomas Muller. So if you want to show a player inside, what you're going to do is to force Leroy Sane being a left footer to actually come in on his right foot, which he's not very good at. He's now coming, because he's a left footer playing on the left hand side, he's coming in on his right foot, he's going into the central region, so you're showing him inside. That way you can actually go and trigger press Leroy Sane again to try and stop him from taking a shot or because he's on his right foot he's obviously going to try to make a mistake or not play a very good pass so you can force a trigger press on him or you can force a trigger press on Thomas Muller so in case Leroy Sane comes inside and then the next player that he's going to want to pass the ball to inside which is Thomas Muller you can force a trigger press on Muller so the ball the moment the ball is played to Thomas Muller your players are actually going to start pressing Muller and try to win possession of him the opposite is the case if you want to show them outside we're going to use Serge Nabri now for example Nabri is a right footed player playing on the right so let's assume that Serge Nabri was a left footed player playing on the right hand side it would mean that Nabri would have to cut inside on his left foot the way Mo Salah does for Liverpool he's going to look to cut inside in that sense so what you want to do is to show him outside showing him to his weaker foot that way instead of Nabri or in our example Salah cutting inside he's going to try to go outside and then you can force him outside and try to trigger not really let me just say tackle him from there because you may not really need to trigger press him at that point now just for clarity's sake I'm going to explain what the trigger press actually means now the trigger press instruction means that the moment the ball is played to a certain player that is when your team is going to start pressing the opposition so you can have a low block and then if you have a low block set and then you have Serge Gnabry as the player that you've shown him outside. If you set a trigger press on Serge Gnabry, the moment the ball is played to Gnabry, your players that are nearby Gnabry are going to try to force the ball off him and try to press him and win the ball. It's good for players that like to cross the ball very often in case Gnabry was a, let's say, let's assume yes correctly that he's a right footed player and he likes to cross the ball a whole lot. Instead of just marking him tight you can actually force a trigger press on Nabri so that the moment the ball is split to him your fullback can get to him as quickly as possible and try to nick that ball off him and stop him from actually playing the cross so that's the way you can show one player inside and show the other player outside one of the reasons why you would show a player inside or outside if you look at the tactics screen now for example if in case i'm playing against Bayern and i want to use this 3-4-3 three, three system I have two central I have two central defensive midfielders in here a defensive midfielder on support duty and the ball winning midfielder on support duty I'm just going to throw in the players that I want to be here in 
Florentino Luis as my defensive midfielder and I'm going to pick in Neves, where is he, Jao Neves, as my other ball winning midfielder. Now I have a lot of players in the central regions and not so many players in the wide areas in my defense. Why I'm going to want to force Bayern to come inside is because I've already seen from their style of play, take a sneak peek at the data hub for this one. You go into the next opponent, go into the overview and there you can see that Bayern have a tiki taka style of play. Now it does look like tiki taka on paper but looking at the opposition instructions that we looked at, Serge Gnabry is a right footed player playing on the right hand side and then Leroy Sane is a left footed player playing on the left hand side. So what favours them is for them to actually go out wide and stretch the pitch so it seems more like wing play than it is tiki taka. So because of that knowledge, I'm going to go back into my tactics and then force my ball playing defenders, both of them, and even the wing backs, you're going to ask the team to show the opposition inside. Now, playing at the top level, this is also risky because players like Sane and Nabri, you may think that they'll have the ability to use both feet, but in case they do not, you can force them inside because I have a lot of players in the central regions. I have three ball playing defenders and I have two defensive midfielders. So my wing backs can actually go out wide, wide enough to actually force the wingers like Leroy Sane and Serge Gnabry to actually come inside into where I have a crowd of five players that can actually win the ball off them. I also have a ball playing defender that is on stopper duty that is in here. He is going to obviously step ahead in case you do not know how the stopper duty works. The stopper duty will push ahead of the opposition defensive line and try to close down the opposition before they get into the area. So with those players coming inside, showing them to their inside foot so they can come into the center of the field, we can actually go on to press them and win the ball. I also have a ball winning midfielder in there that can actually force the opposition to lose possession of the ball when they're in the central areas. So that's kind of how I go about applying tactical opposition instructions of Football Manager. Now, if you do need me to look at the other three methods or the other two methods in detail, we've just covered one. The other two methods in detail, that's the stat-based opposition instructions or the player-based opposition instructions. You can let me know in the comment section, but if you need info on that, there's a video about it. I talked about it earlier on in this video. I'm going to attach a link in the description so you can watch that video next. And if you still need additional info for those other two methods, you can let me know in the comment section and we'll think about how to figure out a video for that one next. But this is the way I apply tactical opposition instructions in Football Manager. If you did find this video useful, remember to leave a like on it and also to subscribe to the channel. It does help the channel a lot. I thank you guys for all the support that you give. That's interesting. I do love that. I'll see you in the next video.